Yo, shout out to the Most High. It's always a high see movie in our lower state. You know what I'm saying? You're now looking at another episode of I Need to Know with my special guest. What's your name, G? Super Sway, Super Sway. I go by the name of Super Sway. What's happening? What's up with you, boy? Not too much, man. You know, cooling. It's cool as, uh, cool as can be in these times. You know, shit crazy. Okay. What's going on with you? Man, I'm chilling, man. When you say crazy times, why don't you tell the world what the fuck you talking about? <laughs> uh, you know, we got this COVID pandemic. You know, shit crazy. Niggas in the house. Well, shit, man, how you maintaining getting faded in this motherfucker? But I want to know. I mean, this motherfucker's out here that's walking around looking like Wolfman, and this motherfucker, where you getting faded at? Oh, uh, you just gotta know. You know, you gotta have the connections. I stick with the same barber I had since I was a kid, so you know, the yeah. phone calls is lovely. For sure, <laughs> the man. phone calls is lovely. I, yeah, this motherfucker asked me. I said, man, how much a haircut costs? He said he hit me on the gram. It's my partner. He said forty dollars a house cut. Mm -hmm. I'm like, damn, but it ain't even no bitches outside. I ain't made no forty for no motherfucking cut. Right, don't get me now. wrong. I threw him. I threw him fifty. I okay. threw him fifty just cause it was you know, drop of the dime. I hit him like, hey, bro, I need the chop. He pull up. So it was you know convenient. So you know, yeah, I got it. But yeah. you know, I threw him fifty just cause he didn't want it. It was a super tip, but you know, yeah, you got to pay what you get for. It's all good. It's yeah. all good with shit, man. My boy, shout out to my nigga from Fame Media, man. He be having a motherfucker, man, look cool, man. Mm -hmm. I'll be around. Yeah. You know how to connect. You got to have one every time. For sure, man. So what you want to talk about, man? I want to talk about your new album real quick. What is it called? Okay, so my new album, Fruition, uh, drops April 21st. It's next Tuesday. Um, it's uh, 16 songs. I got a, a couple different interludes. My partner's doing a spoken word on it. It's a good body of work. I put a lot of time into it. Uh, last year I dropped about three albums. I learned a lot. That's why this album's called Fruition. In the midst of a lot of other things going on right now, it's like a time of my life where I feel like manifestation is for real. But really, all that music I dropped last year, I felt led me up to this album. So this is really like a, a, a real doozy. Yeah. Okay, so how many projects do you have total? Uh, What's a project these days? <laughs> you uh, know like, what I mean? I'm going to say, like, you said you dropped three albums last year. So, like, I would say, like, a four-song project and a three-song project and up. Well, oh, man, I've been rapping since 2001. So, I didn't have projects distributed by companies that I didn't even hear no more. Oh. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, so, probably all the daughter to answer your question. Well, I mean, I didn't drop a lot of music. But more recently, more noted. Uh, probably about four. Like, yeah, this would be my fourth one. I dropped a bunch of singles last year. I took a break from the music, but came back into it last year with a plan. Uh, wanted to really tune myself up and, uh, you know, get ready for what I feel like I'm in for. Okay, and last year out of the three projects you dropped, which one is, your like, your favorite or the one that you stand to, you know, that you like the most? Okay, so the first project I dropped was uh, 510, uh, 510 for obvious reasons. But that project stood out. I had just had my son, bunch of stuff going on. Uh, just reconnected with my own pops at the time. That project was real personal, it was real intimate. Plus I was just starting to write again, you know what I mean? So you get like that floodgate open. So that project was hard to top because it was so personal. I wrote songs, like I wrote a song about my father, it was called Mr. Latson, that's my last name. But it's just that typical, you know, fatherless child story. But it, it's, a, it's a dope song. So it hit a bunch of other people a couple of different ways. So that song that built bridges with me through, you know, people from across the world, for, for real, like cats from a uh, cat from Germany, another cat from New York reach out. It's crazy how this music works. So long story short, that one set the bar kind of high. But then the second one was Anvil. Anvil was more like playing because I had got the tune up out the way with 510. Not playing, but like more uh, pushing the bar rather than trying to get the message out. Now I'm pushing the bar with the music. Uh, where I'm going with this is I don't got no favorite. I'm just going through the gotcha. project. <laughs> gotcha. You feel me? That's where I'm going with all this is I ain't got no favorite. But then after Anvil, so my, my you know, my stage name is Super Sway. So the first, with, after Anvil, I did an album called Super. It was an acronym, Stay Up, Pray Always. And that at that point in my life, I had really started winning. You know, I really made that transition and being a boss. And so that was like, you hear more wisdom. And then this is, this next project has been like existing. Not existed, living at, you know, trying to function and, you know, maintain my own, my t maintain my own agenda and my own schedule in the midst of all this craziness that's going on in the world. So more, more game. I always try to lay, you know, season people. I always try to put as much game as possible. I always try to make sure the content is uh, straight to the point. But for sure, it's a lot more sophisticated um, for the people that already 
listen to me, I think they'll be satisfied. And the people that never heard me, I think they'll be pleasantly surprised. Okay. Okay, so how do you plan on taking advantage of, like, this COVID-19 shit? Like, how do you plan, like, to monetize or give money with the album through all this? Well, people at the house, you know, so all you can really do is attack the digital, attack the digital, attack the digital. Uh, I'm waiting for the doors, the floodgates to open back up because, you know, footwork can never be slept on. It's really only so much you can do on the Internet, you know, so hopefully the floodgates open back up. Because I do need to be back out on the road. But just, you know, you got to have the right marketing campaign. You got to have the right people in place to do that. And me, myself, excuse me, me, myself, I done tried all the, every rapper has, especially when you come from the Bay, you try to market yourself. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You try to advertise yourself. You try to set up all your own shoots. You try to set up all your, and so now I understand and I learned it's also in the 48 Laws of Power is you put the, the right people in the right positions and don't try to do everything yourself. So uh, the right marketing, you know? I got a good marketing staff. I got a good marketing scheme. But, you know, just had the right marketing in place and, and you know, run their bills dry. You got to have some, you know, you got to have some chicken to put up. It ain't free. For sure, marketing ain't free because it's for sure turned around money. Yeah. Anything you market going to bring you back instant investment or instant opportunity to make your money back then. So, you feel me? You're going to have to spend some money. And then that's all you can do right now, though. Everybody in the house, everybody looking at their phones, everybody streaming. Yeah. You know, if you ain't already got a bunch of stuff filmed, if you ain't already got a bunch of stuff recorded, it ain't even like you could go out and film nothing because the police going to come shut you down. Yeah. So the most you can do is, like, if you got recording equipment, I mean, which I do is, you know, I'm coming out. You know, it's kind of, yeah. that's why the I'm lightweight coming out. But, you know, that's all you can do is lock yourself up and record. I've been making beats like a motherfucking, get my, you know, getting the beat game ready. I do a lot of things. I engineer, I make beats. But just a lot of studying, studying my music, you know, studying my craft. Take this time to hone your skills for when the floodgates do open back up. I can go back outside a different kind of beast. Yeah. You know what I mean? So um, last year with your three albums and stuff like that, was you getting a lot of shows and stuff? The shows? Now, I got a couple. Uh, I turned a couple. I turned a lot of shows down. Just, and nothing to do with, you know, none of the agencies out here or none of the acts or none of the, you know, it's just that. The kind of music that I make, it, it don't fit with kind of the agenda that's out here. And I'm waiting for my opportunity where I can get something a little more personal and intimate. You know, probably my own show because I feel like I could host my own two two hour set. So, but, you know, just from going out and being a fan of going to other shows, I just see that the, the, the scheme for the kind of music that I make, at least, I need people to listen. I don't need people to kind of, you know, glance by and, and, you know, they need a reason to be there, so... Now I try to stay this the show scene in the, uh, out here is kind of kind of weird. So right now I'm staying reserved. You know, so, I'd rather just drop this dope music. So so when you said like agenda, you said like um the show scene or something that got like a different agenda. Is that what you were saying? I don't think it's no agenda. I think it's more like a mentality. Uh air, you know, the Bay Area rap scene is is heavily diluted out here. You know what I mean? And, uh, you got areas, so for long story short, you got areas you can go to. I remember I had a show once out in uh, Cameron Park, a little city out outside of Sacramento, just off of, I think, uh, Lake Folsom or some shit like that. A little Hick, I don't want to say Hickville, my bad, but a little, you know, a little town like that off in the, off in the woods. And, you know, the show was so lit because everybody was there to observe, you know, everybody was there to, you know, come to, Observe. Everybody it was, was one there. of them. Basically, you saying it's not to cut you off. You saying it was one of them cities where, when it's it's usually nothing to do, but when it's something to do, that's what everybody does. Right. But then, even then, because this city's where it's something to do, but everybody ain't rapping. You know what I'm saying? Gotcha. Like you got a city like L.A. where it's everything to do. Yeah. And rap don't take the frontal forefront, but out here in the Bay, rap is everything. Okay. You know what I'm saying like you know, you got some cast athlete, but if you know ten dudes. Three of them probably not rapping. Two of them probably like an athlete. One probably, you know, but a majority of them catch is rapping or have rap dabbled mm -hmm. at some point, da 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 da. So I said that to say everybody I feel like at some point in their life out from out here seriously considers being a rapper. You know what I'm saying? So I don't think it's an agenda though. But I think it's just more so like a a, a mentality, like rappers just oversaturated in the Bay Area. You know what I'm saying? So when I when I do do shows, I want it to be People coming out to hear, you know, you know, music that's released. Or if I do release some shit on stage, I need it to be listened to. I don't need to be trying to catch nobody ear when I'm, you know what I'm saying, releasing a song because I feel like the music is kind of heavy to absorb that first time. I'm not gonna hold you. Gotcha. So 
So basically, it sounded to me like you're saying that you don't really just make party jingles. You make music that needs to be sat down and listened to. Now, I got party jingles, but even in my party jingles, I really be trying to bar shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really a bar smith, too. So even in my shit that's like upbeat, you know, boom, 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 boom. I still be in there like, nah, these niggas got to hear me. You feel yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> These niggas got to hear me. So I might have my first eight bars be real, real swag, you know, real swaggy, be real, you know. Regular and then that next eight odd, and then then you know flip the whole little shit and then it'd be like you're not gonna get that the first time you're not gonna. Yeah. I had that all the time. People be like, bro, I, the fourth, third, fourth time I bro, I had to listen to it, bro. You was did it, did it. Maybe I got something I gotta work on, but you know, shit. That's just how God give it to me. Okay, and you said that. Uh, first off, I want to ask you this: What I ask everybody? Do you remember the first rap that you wrote? The first rap that you wrote and recorded, I should say? Not wrote and recorded, because that was a... So the first song I recorded was called That Nigga. I think the hook was like, I am that nigga, and my soul purpose on earth is stack figures, and everybody I ride with is strap nigga, so you can't get your shit pushed back, nigga. But I was like 15. You know, yeah, that, yeah. When you young, you say shit like that, and that's something I had to get out my, you know... I remember my first... That was probably... Yeah, that was the first song I recorded. But I don't. That's all I remember is the hook. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm good with my with my with my verses though. Normally. So, so what would you say your strong point was? Um, the hooks of your verses. What do you think that you do best? Right now, right now, I think people people tell me I'm a good hook dude. Like songs come on, I come up with hooks right away. Mm -hmm. But I really take my time. Like hook, I don't. I never write. I I ain't read a hook in years. Wrote, writ, whatever. I ain't read a hook in years. Like they, I don't put no effort in the hooks. I think that's how they should be though. Very natural. Yeah. Cause some hooks just be chance. You know, Lil John used to make hooks with five words. Definitely. So, but the verses, I really take my time and like, you know, I got, I make an effort. I, I don't even know if I make a point to, but somehow every album end up with like at least one or two no hook, just straight through. Yeah, I like those when a motherfucker just like gas and from the beginning to all the way through just blast all yeah. the way. Yeah, I, I feel think like every you're not a real rapper if you can't like at least can't do it. Even if you ain't talking that talk. I like like I you know, I come from MA, five, six different beats. You feel me? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like if you I don't know, it's it's just different, you know what I'm saying? But that'd be the real gauge. Some cats really, you know, get away with eight bars or every song, twelve bars every song. I be trying to feed people. Do you think that the fact that motherfuckers ain't really sitting up there listening to music like that? Like, I remember when, um, not music, but the whole songs. Because, <clears throat> excuse me, because DJs don't play the whole song in clubs and shit like that. In fact, do you remember when motherfuckers, I seen rap go from motherfuckers making 10-minute songs to songs that might be like 3 minutes and 50 seconds with 3 verses to now motherfuckers usually just only make 2 verses. I think it depends. It's, I think it's because it's the amount of music that's out there, and then the how fast you can get it. Like I was listening to Richie Rich the other day. That that's what I that that's what I ain't gonna do. Yeah. That song got like five verses. Okay. I counted. I was like, bro, this nigga's not finna stop rapping. Yeah. But the song go crazy, or even I was Doggy Style. That's another one where each song six minutes. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Six and a half with skits before each song, and yeah. I don't know, but I think that that's why. See, but then you still get that though. You still get that from some artists. I just think it's the effort that you got to put in. Back then, they had to really fight like that for uh, rap to get noticed. The climate was different for rap in the '90s and '80s than what it is right now. It's so abundant right now. But I think that the artists that do take that extra time to, if you can, because you got to make a song entertaining for three minutes for some of these cats. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you can still do it, but you just got to be able to do it. Um, but if you can, though, I think that that'd be the difference. Like Nipsey, you know, Nipsey was one of them cats. R.I.P. Nip. Nipsey was one of them cats. He had one of the great albums that dropped recently that Victory left. That was one of the, uh, album where, you know, he had two and three songs, breaks. Beat breaks, a whole different beat come on, same song. You know what I'm saying? You got to just know how to drink another cat that's good, but them the cats that be around forever, though. Yeah. You know, that be around for the 10, 20, they, the, they not, you know, they figured out how to feed people. And then yeah. that's how they, I think that that's how they could stay around. You know, it's crazy because on um on the last show or the, one of these shows I had, and I was talking about that, um, 
I feel like as far as like gangster rap go, like that was the only genre of rap music that I feel like hasn't got way better since the beginning. You know what I'm saying? I heard that victory lap though. That shit was knocking. That victory lap, shout out to Nipsey. That victory lap was knocking. I, recommend- I don't think that was gangster rap though. I think Nipsey was just a gangster rapper. But I think victory lap was more like teaching, was like uh like Jay. Like, like I would hear like if if Nip was to, you know, would have kept going and dropped more albums. Like I don't think, and I don't even think Ho well, let me not say that, because Ho got crazy albums. But I think Nip albums would have been put on that kind of level as far as how people look at Jay Z albums and 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 li- people listen to niggas is bagging up the reasonable doubt still. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so. I think that victory lap would you know is gonna be that for sure well, now. Well, you know, you know it's crazy because like it's so many genres out there. Like that's kind of like gang- gangster conscious rap. Like Q yeah. was gangster conscious rap. It's real. Well, Q was a gangster rapper for sure because Q was on some. Movement like Mozzie, not Mozzie, but like even Mozzie, Mozzie a gangster rapper. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like some niggas just be moving mayhem. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. it can put that together real well on words. But then some shit really real life. And when you really, you know, when you, when you really from the streets and you telling your real life experiences, shit. If your shit got ugly, you know what I'm saying? You telling what happened and it got ugly. So you just telling your gangster story. You know what I'm saying? And I think that that's what Nip was doing was telling this gangster story. I don't think. um I wouldn't even put him in a gangster rap. But I think, to answer your question, though, I think gangster rap specifically has come very far, though, uh, compared to, like, when you think about, like, the well, first of all, rap just in general, you got to think the intricacies of rap have completely changed since the 90s and then even then since the 80s. Like, what's considered gassing at the time in the 90s is completely different than what's considered gassing right now. You know what but, I mean? but, okay. I got you. I would say that because I do think a lot of guys can rap now. But what I was saying is, what are your five favorite gangster rap albums? Gangster rap albums. <laughs> Jeezy. That, uh, what was that Jeezy album? I can't even remember. Is it Thug album. Motivation? Nope. The other one with that uh, with that Go Crazy on it. and that. Wait, that is Thug Motivation. Is that Thug Motivation with yeah. Go Get It and Go Crazy and all that. And, uh, okay, yeah, that... Uh, 50, that get rich, die trying. Uh, gangster rap album. Let me think. It's all the gangster shit. Um, I got it though. Shit, I don't know. That's tough. Because 50 would be up there twice. 50 would be up there twice. Because get rich, die trying. And then that album, he had Curtis. I, I really like that album. I think that, that was a great album. Um, Pac for sure. Uh, all eyes on me with the double disc for sure. Uh, and then I'm gonna say gang that Jesus piece. Yeah, that's an unorthodox ass list, but that's what I came up with on the spot. Got you. <laughs> yeah, I ain't mad at that. I ain't mad at that. I still got to hear that Jesus piece because I did hear that was a great ass album. Hard. I think game is so is uh you know underrated. But the, so. now what I was like, when did Jesus piece come out? Probably like 2015, 2016, somewhere around. Probably okay. earlier than that. Maybe even earlier than that. Maybe like 2011, 2012, for real. Because when I was saying like a lot of it hasn't progressed, like when you think about great albums and shit like that, when I'm talking about great albums, I thought those were some good albums because I love Get Rich or Die Trying. Mm-hmm. But Get Rich or Die Trying came out 20 years ago, damn near. And when nice. I, you know what I'm saying? And when I'm saying like shit progress, I mean, when you say shit progress, I'm like, damn, no. Like if it progress, then I would be able to name like five rap albums from the last like three you years say recently though you just said my favorite yeah that's my point though yeah that's my point like if i like like prime example if i say who's like the top 10 basketball players of all time you would say lebron james because he's this era though i don't know no, but you get what i'm saying yeah, though yeah, it's yeah. it's like if you can't grab nothing from this era then has it really progressed Cause you said something from four years ago, then you said something from twenty years ago, then you said all eyes on me, and that's twenty five years ago. Yeah, but you know, rap is different though. <clears throat> like rap, cause rap in this whole gangster rap is just one side of rap. Period. And yeah. Rap just completely changed now. Like what's considered rap and the kinds of different guys that that occupy the space of rappers now. Yeah. And the kind of music that they make is kind of pushing the limits. And you know, some of these cats ain't even rapping. A lot of these niggas just uh, singing. Yeah, you know what I'm saying so, and it's been that way for the past couple years. 
but I don't know. I would probably have to sit down and find out who I specify like gangster rappers first, and then be like, but for sure, get rich. But then, then you think you, you, that shit is twenty years ago. Yeah, like, <laughs> like, like, I think a lot of this shit is dope. Like, I like Gucci and all the motherfuckers because it's gangster shit that I can actually work out to. It's just different, like you said, man. It's different um, genres within gangster rap. Perfect. You know what I'm saying? Now, when we was coming up, you know, I was always looking for a great story. Mm -hmm. That's what Cube, Cube is the best storyteller to me of all time mm -hmm. because he's always telling great stories and shit like that. Beginning... Middle conclusion, three verses, beginning, middle conclusion. Tupac was another one, Nas was another one, and shit like that. And I ain't really heard like a good ass story lately. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is. You know, I think, but I think the average motherfucker now, though, mm -hmm. like the average motherfucker now getting on a on a rap record is barred the fuck up, though. Yeah, but I know exactly what you mean, though, as far as like what what, what picture you paint. And nah, you right though. And he, you don't get that because that kind of that I don't think that's what the people want though. People be wanting some short and sweet, you know what I'm saying? And, and stories like that, like the albums you talking about, it take like I said a second to digest. You can't just listen to Illmatic one time and appreciate it for what it was. You had to like hear rewind, but see, you had to hear that song and, and twenty that, times before you got the every bore. And that's me? what all so, and I, and that's where was that where you was going when you was talking about like turning down some shows because you kind of feel like you need to be in a setting where motherfuckers need to hear what you're saying. Well, yeah, 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 for sure. Not trying to put myself on Nas level by any means or nothing like that, but yeah, for sure. Uh, I think that I know that for sure. My music is something that take a little bit more to digest. It's a little bit thicker. It's just, it's a steak. You know what I mean? And, uh, like I said, you, you know, you can't, you just got to be where you belong. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Just be where you belong and not try to overexert yourself because that's really where you spin your own wheels. It's much more of a better place to be than sitting on your wealth and your hands, planning what your next move was going to be than just out there exposing yourself and all your resources shooting in the dark. And, you know, you can obviously make the wrong kind of relationships that way travel 50 miles in the wrong direction and have to come back and go yeah. down the other road that way. Yeah. So yeah, most definitely just trying to be reserved and not, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Not, uh, hesitant, just trying to be reserved. You yeah. Know? You know, and I, and I totally get where you was going with it. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But you know, I want to hear you say it, yeah, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, Cause sure. you never want to try to put, you know, cause everybody, we are artists and shit like that. Yeah. And everybody got their own madness to, you know, method to their madness. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. if I want to go see like, Wu Tang Clan, right? I'm out of Wu Tang Clan. That's a fact. You gonna like, but that's the thing too. Like, Drake just got booed off the Frank Ocean stage. You yeah. feel me? But that's clearly in the fact that he just didn't belong. But he, Drake though, got booed off the Frank Ocean stage. So, I mean, shit, like, that's, you know. But a Wu Tang show, you're not gonna go see Meek Mill open up for Wu Tang. You know what's crazy? You know what's crazy? In Philly, though, there's a there's a lane for that, though. <laughs> but you, but you, <laughs> but like, if Wu Tang was coming to Philly to perform, then maybe because Meek the Philly dude. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. That ain't gonna be nothing you market on. You know what I'm saying? If you're not out, I'm gonna say this: I wouldn't be shocked. But if, <laughs> but if, but if, but check this out: if I was going to see, if I was going to see motherfucker Nas, right? Yeah. And they said surprise guest, and I'm waiting on the next nigga to come out, and it was. And all you heard was doop 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 doop, <laughs> and Luke and two live motherfucking crew came out. I'll be like, "What the fuck is going on?" Yeah, nah, yeah, that's a fact though. That's a fact though. You know what I'm saying? But now nah, I I do perform out here. I don't. All right, so I don't want to make it seem like I don't be performing the debate. I do perform. I do perform. It's just lately, you know, I've been turning some shit down. Just trying to make sure I get my own, you know, situation together before I even go back out there and expose myself like that. So first I want to make sure the music is well received. I want to make sure I'm out here performing no bullshit. And then, you know, two, I want to make sure that like, I, you know, with some of my marketing earlier, I want to make sure that that's represented right. So I'm getting the right shows. And then, yeah, but it's just lately I done had to turn down a couple, but I'm, I'm still performing though for sure. I was just up at, uh, out in, uh, what is it? Back room, back, back, back couch. Back bar, back bar South in San Jose. I was just out there with uh that boy uh I was styling and kicking them. Yeah, last month. Got you. Ago, yeah. yeah, shout out to Jay Styling, shout out to Kick the Sneak. Mm -hmm, most definitely. I most gotta definitely. ask you a question. Speaking of Kick the Sneak, right? Mm -hmm. What is your favorite album he's been on? He's been on? Yeah. 
that uh what was three times first album which stacking album chips. stacking chips no what was the second album uh Something real 2000. talk 2000 stacking chips okay stacking chips for sure and specifically because of one verse and it was on that hating on the player kick verse on that was just bananas that was on stacking chips right i'm, I'm wait I'm wait young, you said bro. hating on a player yeah, yeah. no that no that's real talk 2000 that's real talk okay that's, that's real, real talk, talk 2000. 2000 but kick verse and only really because that verse though that verse I remember being a young nigga on AC Transit with my little CD Walkman. Yeah. Running, you know, because you could just hold rewind and yeah. run it back. I yeah. just run that verse back. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dofi said, keep running, young dude. I think they own you. Fuck that. <laughs> it is said a fine running away. And you ain't even it. Yeah, that nigga was going. Yeah. Well, you know what's crazy? <laughs> that I had to learn this. Yeah. That Kick the Sneak is actually one of the rawest motherfuckers that you listen to in a headphone. Like he's that's two different things. Like if you sitting up there, like you said, you mm -hmm. had a CD. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I'm sitting up there riding around in my car listening to Kick, that's mm -hmm. different than if he's right here in my ear. See, but then you know, again, Kick, one of them niggas though. See, it sound he one of them niggas that's hard to digest, but it sound excellent the first time. Yeah, you know what I'm saying it sound completely different. But then, so like for example, <laughs> you'll be hearing, you can still be slapping shit like that's my word and catch something new still. Yes. To this day. Yeah. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Be like, nigga, I've been slapping this song for 10, 12 years. <laughs> nigga, I ain't never peeped that line. Same <laughs> thing. But like, when you really break down this shit, this, you want to, that's a nigga that was a storyteller, no. Like, yep, yep. When you talk about Coke YT from beginning to end of that song, that nigga paint you a vivid picture. Nigga, I'm in the Dauphine Rental trying to paint the town. Four speed, 100 Civic, and I'm breaking it down. I had one hell life, plus I'm riding a spare. Thermometer said, honey, I'm taking him there. What? Nigga, you, know, you know what's so crazy? crazy cause, nigga. Because you know what one of my favorite, Kick the Sneak got one of my favorite Bay Area albums, and he got one of my favorite albums that's in my top 50. Sneak Idol. Yeah. I like yeah. Sneak Idol yeah. a whole bunch. That's my that's one of my older brother. That's one of his favorite albums. That's one of his favorite albums for sure. Yeah, I think Kick for sure is a, a goat. Like a Bay Area goat for sure. For you know, sure. As far as like who held it down for a good portion of the hyphy movement, it was that boy. Who do you think the most three important figures in the hyphy movement are? Does Dre count as the hyphy movement or was Dre the Thiers movement? Is it a Dre is definitely. Mac Dre, hell yeah. Hyphy movement? Yep. Okay, so Dre for sure. Uh, I will say Fody, because Fody took it to that get my get a report card. When that came out, I was in Juvenile Hall. But I do re just recall, I was in Juvenile Hall watching this nigga on 106 in Park, though, with that. And they was talking about how his nigga was number one album in the country or some shit for a couple weeks. Yeah. And it just blew my mind, because this nigga, you know, the video was at Ben's Burgers and shit. They started showing the video at Ben's Burgers and I lived right around the corner by Foothill Square for, uh, you know, at the time when that shit came out, too. So, Fawdy took it around the world. And then, so I said Mac, I said Fawdy. That's tricky, though, because then you got King and Fab, and neither one of them niggas can be left out. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know. can't leave neither one of them out. You got to make room. All right, so Fawdy and Mac Dre is 1A and 1B. You said what? Fody and Mac Dre is one A and one B. No. And then Kick is. <laughs> you know what? You know what I got? You know what I got? You know what I got? If it's you know how they say the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost in Christianity, mm -hmm. the the hyphy Trinity in my my thing would be mm -hmm. Mac Dre since he did. That's the Holy Spirit because the that shit was straight. You know he did. He got to be the Spirit. But then Mac was such a vibe though. That nigga was gifted, boy. Yeah, he was. Oh my god. Yeah. Then I go uh, Kick the Sneak. He would be like the damn near like the father. You know what I'm saying? Cause he was damn near on everything. And I would say the motherfucking um Fab then if you Fab. Could say I would say Fab. Fab. I would say Fab because it was, you know, like E40 already had something going on yeah. before that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I think he was like a uh a, a motherfucker that was that was from the old but still relevant. I think what Fody role is and all of this shit is like when some shit come out from the bay, I think his role and he does it to perfection is that he take that shit to the world. Like, yep. all right, this what we do. Like he, he come grab it, like, all right, this what we doing, y'all. You feel me? He did that with the function shit, he did it with the the hyphy shit. He always come put on, like, all right, hey y'all, come come check us out. You know what I'm saying? Everybody might not be able to pull up on 106. Fody can go wherever the fuck he wants to. He's yep. Uncle Fody everywhere. So yep. You know, he just straight flexing his muscle to, you know. That's kind of like what Drake does. Like, Drake hears a cool little underground song and stuff like that, and then he go do the remix. Yeah, I mean, it's I wouldn't say, 
Yeah, yeah, facts. But I don't think it's nothing wrong with that though. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's good marketing. Like, you know, it's double E. You eat, I eat, we both eat. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. I mean, I definitely think it's dope because you definitely want your shit walked in a door that you cannot walk it in yourself. Straight up. Straight you know up. what I'm saying? I think that's dope. Like, if I had a song that was hella tight in Oakland or whatever, and then it pushed the sack, and it was, you know, like the D-Lo uh, know-how. Know-how, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That shit, when I first heard I'm like, okay, this shit cool, this shit cool. And then when 40 grabbed it, now it's a thing. And then D-Lo got a song to do uh, with Tiger. Did he do a song mm -hmm. with Tiger and mm -hmm. shit like that? Yep, that. Uh, yeah, Tell her though, some yeah, shit like yeah, that. I remember they shot the video at the airport. Yeah, that oh, shit yeah, was dope. Uh, yeah, yeah. Now that shit was dope. Yeah, bro, most definitely. Uh, and look, shit, I was, uh, man, I was going to Castle Mountain when that shit came out in like, oh, that was like, oh, five, oh, six, something like that. But that nigga's still around. Do you, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah that nigga's moving. still I be, around. You I've seen so, him on Instagram moving. You know what I mean? Like, you know, sometimes that look be most definitely, but, you know, that song was already, but, but then, like, again, if that's what 40 do, and then D-Lo had legends. It wasn't just, you know, Jack was on that, Beta was on that, he 40 yeah. was on that, you know what I'm saying? That was a hot-ass song, too. Yeah, it was. And then he had the You Play Me. That's my favorite, them, that's my favorite D-Lo song bro, all I time. Been, I done been on college campuses everywhere yeah. when that song comes on. First of all, they play that song everywhere, bro. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? On college camp, I done been up, and you hear that shit drop. Every DJ, I guarantee every DJ has that in their arsenal. Yeah. Yeah, if, if he knows something. Yeah, you got to have that shit, <laughs> if man. He that, knows something. That's so, you know what, because Rico, that's- the kid's still around. Boy, look, them niggas that made each other's lanes, bro. And you know, that's one of them songs that actually puts you in Oakland. Mm -hmm. You know, like when I hear that shit, I think it's straight Oakland, but I specifically think East Oakland, somewhere around- uh, mm -hmm. MacArthur between Fruitvale and Seminary. That's See, I think it more because probably where I was at at the time, like yeah. I said, I was going to Castle Mount when he blew up, but I was I was living in the east over there by Foothill Square. Yeah. So I used to, we used to always be sliding over there by like Hunsberry and all that. So that's what I think about when I hear them songs. I think about like 103rd, 99th, you feel me? Uh, up by, you know, Oaks Market up there behind Foothill Square. I think all that shit, but I know what you mean though, for sure. It, and for sure take you there. But that's why I like listening to shit like three times. You know what I'm saying? I think old school three times take you there. Richie Richie Rich for sure take you there. Most definitely. Yeah, I like Richie Rich too. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy though because, you know, that motherfucker, uh, uh, This What I Ain't Gonna Do That Song, mm -hmm. I didn't realize what sample that was. That's Boosie, ain't it? I don't know what sample that is, but I know for sure it's a sample. And it'd be crazy because, you know, you'll just hear some shit on, like, KBLX. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, oh, yeah. nigga, that's where that came from. Yeah. Okay. Or not, what's that old Kiss FM? Yeah, Kiss FM. And I'm sitting yeah, up there, yeah. and I'm like, this, that motherfucking <laughs> Richie Rich is a damn fool. <laughs> and I'm sitting up there listening to it like this. Yeah. And then I'm like, okay, this Richie Rich. Hey. Hey, yeah, facts. I found out. That's how I found out that Dre, that nothing but a G thing. I found out that was a sample same way. And, you know, you think a nigga just chef some shit your whole life, you be feeling lied to like a motherfucker. Like, somebody did chef it, but you nigga, you well, didn't a, chef that motherfucker. Yeah, yeah, Dre is, Dr. Dre is a surgeon. Yeah, for he's sure. He's a surgeon. He's, you know, he's like, he was doing Photoshop with beats before Photoshop could be done. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you know what? I That's what I, because you know, when you, it's so many different levels to the, to the, and that's at his mastery. You know, Dre, a master at what he do. But it's so many different ways to make beats. When I was a kid, and all, all, all I imagined was niggas in there. Like, I'm, when I, I'm imagining Dre. Yeah. Dee, 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 yeah. Yeah, you, know you, you wasn't by yourself. <laughs> you feel me? You wasn't. I, I, whoa, 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 whoa. That's what I'm seeing in my mind, nigga. Nah, a sample cut, pace. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what's funny though? In the beginning, yeah. though, I didn't know the two shirt made his own beats back in the day. But then again, I didn't know Face made his own. You know Scarface? Yeah, Scarface I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know he made his own beats. Scarface made a couple beats too. Not even just his though. He responsible for a couple different uh, joints, and even still to this day, he be touring. Uh, with you know, with his guitar and shit. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot of cats that's uh, but face, yeah, for sure. I didn't know Show made beats. I know Show had that. Uh, he had a he had a cold bass player back in the day. I remember Show used to have a lot of live instrument players on his joints. Oh yeah, man, that motherfucker, um, Shorty the Pimp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah, album man. is damn near all live. That shit sound crazy mm -hmm. than a motherfucker. Mm -hmm. You got any live shit on your uh? Nah, your man. Album? But you know what? My beat selection is is is. 
I do gravitate more towards live sounds, but that's for sure something I need to set up. Uh, is a is a I want to do like a whole session with a uh, with a live band, but that's something that you really got to coordinate and organize. You know what I'm saying? And, and you know, but nah, 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 I don't. I got various different producers on here, and uh, uh, it's not like a scatter sound at all. Everything is cohesive, but still, you know, spread. Gotcha. Yeah. And what what rappers you got on there? All right, so I got uh, Gates on there. Uh, Gates, a rapper out of East Oakland, California. You know what I mean? From 83rd. Skrill Gates? Skrill Gates, yes, sir. I got my brother, uh, Godspeed the Great, uh, from Wing Team, from 23rd. Uh, and then I got a singer, Gage Navarro. And then the rest of it is all me. So there's only actually two songs with features, and the rest is all me. And uh, I, like I said, I got my I got my brother, Mike Williams. He did a spoken word over the first, there's three interludes, there's one in the middle, one in the beginning, one in the end, just to kind of give you a, uh, he does his damn thing now, I'm not gonna hold you, he did three spoken word pieces called Fruition, name of the album, to kind of help bring it together. But yeah, so aside from them, three individuals, or four individuals, though, that's it. You know, the rest of it is on me. Gotcha, and do you have your own label? Oh yeah, yeah, so right now I'm in the process, so, Right now, I'm in the process of building a label. I'm trying to build a platform for, you know, the future artists of the Bay Area. Uh, I didn't have to navigate this minefield for quite some time. And, you know, I just want to start something from what I've seen based off my experiences, what I think I can offer this next generation of artists. So, yeah, my label is Ten Toes Music Group. Uh, Ten Toes, pretty self-explanatory, but to break it down for the people that don't know, uh, it just means, you know, uh, standing up for what you're talking about. Uh, knowing that you're going to have to walk all the way to the edge sometimes off. Uh, you're going to always fall on your feet, you know what I'm saying? But that same, if it, if what you want is all down there on the ground, you're going to go get that, you know what I'm saying, and come back with it for your people. And that's Ten Toes. So, you know, just really wanted to go with something that everybody can relate to. Hopefully everybody can get in the realm of mind state of, because I want this to be, you know, the next Dev Jam. I want this to be a real West Coast stable, you know, a real West Coast stable as far as uh, regular labels go. But yeah, so Ten Toes. I got a couple artists, uh, Young Denalco, uh, is my, my my business partner, uh, um, Lil Ashton out of San Francisco, Lakeview, uh, Shy Bay out of Chicago, uh, you know what I mean? So, and we turning this up, you know, we just building, we building for the future. And they're not on the album, those are just artists that you're working with? Yeah, nah. So, you know, like I said, I produce, uh, I engineer, and I, I excel at both those things, too. So, at this, with those other skills, you can't do that. Those are the services you got to offer. So, and then, you know, like I said, I want to create something different for, for, for the next group. So, I might have them on some of my music. I might be on some of their music. But for now, nah, I'm just trying to develop, work on and develop them as artists as much as I can is well i don't even want to make it seem like a mentorship because it ain't even that i'm really just sharing my resources but at the same time i got a gift with producing yeah. so i want to offer my input where i can to help take their bodies of work to the next level too just having that extra set of ears you know what i'm saying yeah. and then somebody saying yeah bro come on let's go hit the button with you because sometimes that's all you need is a nigga to be like yeah bro you got it go ahead shoot it you know what i'm saying shoot that shot yeah you know it's crazy because mm -hmm. i was gonna ask you this earlier when we was talking about hooks mm -hmm. right who is your favorite person on the hook? On the hook? Like, if you could get anybody to do, like, two hooks on your album. Who Ever? Would be? Ever. Dead or alive. Some rapper or a singer? Either one. Okay. Okay. Erica Badu. For sure, Sade. Oh, yeah, that was easy. Sade? If, I, if it's my music? Yeah. That, and I don't even mean it's finna be no smooth ass shit though, but that's yeah. just mean they're my two favorite voices though. But like, you know, I didn't hear Erica about doing some shit that just go crazy. I ain't never really heard Sadu on no, I mean uh, Sade on no, uh, no rap shit like that. I know she did that Soldier of Love a couple years ago, but I hadn't already heard about doing a couple rap joints that went bananas. But if I just had to like scour the globe for my two features, and it didn't matter if it was a rapper or a singer, it's not gonna be no rapper. I'm, I'm already, you feel me? So. It'll be those two. You know what? I didn't even think of Erica Badu. Oh, Erica Badu right. do be sounding dope as fuck on hooks. Like right. that Baduism. If yeah. you listen to that Baduism, that shit sound like it came out today. It could come you out anytime. Me? You feel me? Like, yeah. You know what I'm saying? I be like, you know, 
Sometimes I be wanting to get on some mixtape shit and like keep her hook, find an yeah. instrumental, throw the instrumental in there, yeah. just keep her on. The, <laughs> I would. I like Nate Dog on hooks. Yeah, man. R.I.P. Nate. Yeah, man. Show, that, man. That's that's the motherfucker right there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure, man. Nate is for sure gonna get. You. But then, yeah, 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 for sure. Cause remember when 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 he. T Pain was the motherfucker on the hooks for a minute. Was the nigga, you know, that was for sure the first nigga that came to my mind, but I didn't want to give you the cliche T Pain. <laughs> you feel me? Show you how old I am, nigga. I was, that's for sure the first nigga that came to my mind. I was, in my head, I was like, T Pain, I was like, nah, you can go deeper than that. But you know what's crazy, though, about <laughs> hooks, though? Like, when I'm thinking about hooks, I'm thinking about not only how catchy it is, but when you hear the hook, you know exactly who's voicing the shock value. Cause you could get shock value of having DMX on the hook. Yeah, that's oh yeah, X is a is a boy though. Yeah, but that's a fact. I think that's what makes somebody a good hook person though. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, because when that voice come on, it's a whole it's a whole vibe. You know, yeah. it's a whole vibe. If somebody coming on just to bless your hook, that mean they somebody with at least with what they do. So it's like a whole vibe change. So we you gotta be and you only got eight bars. Yeah. So you gotta be and you might be repeating four bars. That's you right. What I'm saying so you gotta really get it and you know. But yeah, that's what make the uh, the cats get at what they do. You know what I'm saying. So this was the question last week that I blasted off to all my homies through text message. Instagram, wherever the fuck. One being the highest, 100 being the lowest, right? So if somebody's ranked number one, that's the greatest, 100 being the lowest, to make the list. Where do you put Ja Rule at? From one to 100. East Coast rappers, though. Only East Coast. East Coast rappers. Only East Coast, yes. What are we talking about, boys? We just talking about in general. Just all around motherfucker. Like, if you had to make the list of East Coast rappers, where would you put Ja Rule at? One, one to 100. 100. To a hundred, man, low. I'm not no Ja Rule fan like that, like low, because you. I, I I was born in '90, and by the time Ja Rule really got took away from the scene, it was like oh two, oh three. I was like 13 when 50 deleted him. You know what I'm saying? So Ja Rule, his run was like, I only caught commercial Ja Rule. I wasn't like a rap head like that yet. Yeah. So I wasn't the biggest Ja Rule fan, and then when I went back and started studying. He had got bodies, so that wasn't somebody that I was studying like that. Gotcha. You know what I mean? But I would say low, though, probably 80. 80? Because I'm a, you know, New York got some, Ja Rule got hits, though, but, like, label hits. But, yeah, so 80. You know what? If I'm a, I'm looking at it from a fan perspective, a rapper perspective, and a CEO perspective. If I'm a CEO, then I'm going to put him in damn near, like, the top, 15, right? Rapper perspective, I might put him at around 75. But uh, artist, I'm going to put him probably around closer to 20. I give him a 50. All around artist, yeah. I, I put him a 50. Yeah, I, all around artist, you probably could give him more than that because it's still artists from New York that ain't never did what he did as an artist. Yeah. You feel me? But yeah, you right as a CEO, same thing. But then he kind of backtracked a little bit with, with some of his CEO movements recently. But still, to this day, some of you know it's it's cats that ain't never did, never hit some of Ja feats. And ja still performing, like you know, it's yeah. a reason for that. Like, <laughs> what's your favorite Ja Rule song? Two favorite Ja Rule songs. I got two for your ass. Two favorite Ja Rule <laughs> songs, bro. I don't know, bro. Because like I said, all right, let me see. <laughs> I gotta really think about some Ja Rule shit. Let me see. I couldn't name two Ja Rule songs I wasn't on the radio. <laughs> you ready? You ready for mine? Yeah. Caught Up. I think Caught Up is a dope-ass Ja Rule song. What was that one song he had with Bobby Brown? And that's the other one. <laughs> and the that, thug love it. Yeah. Thug, I love thug. Thug, thug, thug. Yeah, that shit. <laughs> that shit is dope than a motherfucker. Yeah, yeah. That nigga Bobby came in doing his thing. Now, would you agree that Ja Rule and Nelly have similar, like, uh, uh, styles or... You know? It, all right, so Nelly, I seen. You feel me? Because then he came like 04, 05. So then I got. No, no. Thing. Nelly is 099, 2000. For real? Yeah. Nellyville? Nah, when Nellyville came out? Mm, 2000? It that was right before. Not that old. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Damn, for real? Because you said 04, right? That's Kanye West. That's a fact. Fact, Get Richard Die trying. That's 04 and right. Kanye West is 05, 06, or something right. like that. 05. So, so 
what I what I think it is then, because all right, so out for show was paying attention to rap at this time. Then. What I think it is is I think Nelly was just slapping out here in Cali better than Ja was, because when Nellyville dropped, because Ja was just on the radio, Nellyville had not Nellyville Country Grammar. Country Grammar had joints that wasn't, you know what I'm saying, like, that wasn't necessarily getting radio play. Like, niggas was just slapping that. Like, ha-ha, niggas was just slapping hot boys. Well, I think niggas from the West was more accustomed to South, that, that yeah. Southern, you feel of me? Of course. The hot Rather boys had a lot, of, a lot to do. I said the hot boys had a lot to do. You know what I'm just saying? With yeah. motherfuckers fucking with the South, because the West Coast has always felt like you know they, they was next to the South. Yeah, but you know, and then I'm from the bottoms, bro. Like, I remember the 9-9-2000, boy. Nigga, everybody. Well, I remember when niggas was really out here saying, whoa, they. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that shit. Hey, Woody, what you finna do, Woody? Like, you niggas is from West Oakland, bro. What is you talking about? That's <laughs> when Baller Blocking first came out. <laughs> 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 that's hell of funny. Yeah, that's what Baller Block at first. Niggas had that on VHS. Everybody had that. I don't know how. Like, it was without the streaming service. Everybody had that. Yeah, man. <laughs> that, you a damn fool for that. You a damn fool for that. You so, so cash money or young money? Cash money. Easy. Yeah. But young money got Wayne, though. You feel me? But cash money, for sure. But young money, that, that, that young money Wayne is hard to contend with. But cash money, easy. Yeah, cash money. You can't that, do nothing with Juvie. Juvie was a whole body. You feel me? And then big timers. Wayne. Turk ain't, you know, he just had, I think he only had one. Yeah. And then BG. The BG albums was kind of spread out. Juvie was the back to back to back to back to back. You feel like, me? like, I thought Juvenile, I kind of looked at Juvenile as going to be the next Scarface. Like when he came out, like, cause you know, he was kid. He reminded me of like a motherfucker that was on the, on his porch preaching. Yeah. Yeah. Like, because he was so melodic with it though. His flow, he was, he had a whole, his voice too. Yeah. 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 He had like a cool little smoky voice and shit like that. Plus that was around that time when the Rough Riders came out. Like Juvenile actually did a song with this dude called Young One. Uh, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you remember that shit? Mm -hmm. That Rough Riders movie and I mean movement with that uh motherfucking Cash Money movement was the shit to me. Yeah, nah, them niggas uh, had clicked up tough for a little bit. Uh, but nah, I loved it when the Cash Money movement is. That's like one of that's, if my opinion, that's like my my kind of golden era, staple era hip hop that I drew the most influence from. Cause like I said at that time, especially out here, that's when everybody was getting going. You know what I'm saying? That's when all the little grill shops was popping up all over the place. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, Juvie had just dropped that five, no, 400. And then G-Code, you feel me? Because everybody was waiting on that G-Code. to yeah. Niggas didn't want that to disappoint. That G-Code dropped, you know what I'm saying? And then Fresh was going crazy on everything. You know what I'm saying? And then they started dropping the high boy shit. So, yeah, for sure, cash money. Guys, cash money over everything for me. You know what I'm saying? That's probably like my... My, but that, I think it's just my age. You know, that's what I came up in. You know, it's crazy because, like, when I was fucking with that cash money movement, right? Mm -hmm. After that shit kind of, like, disfigured or dismembered, you know what I'm saying? I kind of felt like Dipset was going to do that something similar to the East Coast. Because I like the Dipset album a lot. That Cameron and uh, Jim Jones, Hell Rail, Freaky Z. That shit was knocking. I like that album a lot. Yeah, man. Uh them niggas was hard too though you know they and they was they fucked with them tough too uh but that was like i, I was like the all right so that's like oh five when dipset was because cam was like a little bit earlier but yeah that i think that album that was not oh five diplomatic immunity was that album i think that was like oh five <laughs> bro i think that had oh three oh three maybe oh three. okay gotcha gotcha you because yeah. i remember who i you know what i remember who i was fucking with and who i wasn't fucking with <laughs> <laughs> That nigga keep up. Okay. You know, because you got to keep a measuring yeah, stick yeah, on yeah. this shit. How old was you in like 03? 13. Okay, gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. So, like, I'm looking at what school. It's right, though. My measuring stick is like, where, what school was I going to? Or, like, where like, was I at when that shit came out? Like, I'm thinking about, damn, what songs my bitch rolled off with the next nigga in? And what, what, <laughs> what, 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 what bitch rolled up from the next nigga to fuck with me with? And it was, yeah. oh boy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, nah, they went crazy though. They was going crazy for a minute. Yeah, I thought they was gonna. They did though. You know, I don't even think they got shorted. I just think that, uh, 
you know, it kind of burnt out after a while. All things do. Yeah. You know. Who would you say the greatest rap group of all time is? And when I say greatest rap group, you we going to put members three. No, four, three and down, like three and two in one category, and then put four and up like in the crew. You get what I'm saying? Like, we're not going to compare like a NWA that's five members or something like that to Mob Deep because they only two members. Okay. Okay, so what's the criteria then? Are we doing big numbers or small numbers? Let's do small numbers first. My top all time? Yeah. If you say, man, this is my favorite two rap group or three, you know, the small group. Two piece, huh? Three piece. Okay. In no particular order. Uh, Outcast. Okay, uh, now big numbers. Big numbers. Okay. Uh, high Boys. That's easy. Yeah, high high boys. boys? Yeah. Hmm. I go Outcast. I got to fuck with you on that Outcast. And then Group. The dog mail? Okay, but they was they a group or was that like a label? That was like a click. Okay. Yeah. I'ma say uh damn NWA only had two albums. Niggas gotta have an album together. At okay. least. At least an album together. Okay. Uh shit. Shit, I said outcast. Wu Tang. Okay. Ooh, what about Bone? I gotta throw Bone in there too. See, now motherfuckers say <laughs> that was my question. Wu Tang or Bone? My personal opinion, Bone. Okay. Uh, I think at the time, what was happening in hip hop, Wu Tang is a little more historical, and it happened in New York, whereas you know Bone Thugs and Harmony happened in Cleveland, and a little less historical. You know what I'm saying? Because hip hop was already going. You got to think Wu Tang came out when rap was still hella fresh, in the epicenter. You know what I'm saying? So they yeah. got a little more clout with that. Yeah. But I think as far as like with that pen. Yeah. And like the niggas talking about what they did, and that was like breaking the mold. Cause like, yeah, Wu Tang sound was different, but Bone Thugs brought a whole nother era to rap. Like they, they completely, completely, completely. The cosign was like huge to get Easy E to put you out is like mm -hmm. phenomenal. Like who the fuck does that? You know so what I'm saying? You, they and and you know that was brilliant for him to do it. And that's crazy because you would think that. I think that Bone Thugs is for sure one of them cats, one of them groups that's uh, slept on in, in history, for sure. For sure. Mm -hmm. That's 1999. That that was a horror album. I fuck with that. Uh, one of my favorite songs that they got was um, Crossroads. Mm -hmm. Crossroads and what the f and first of the month. Yeah, I like that joint they had with Biggie back in the day. Uh, that uh, young and dangerous. Yeah. Can't too many niggas. Yeah, they was on Biggie shit. Yep. Yeah, yeah that shit was okay. hella dope. But as yeah. far as like when I want to hear motherfuckers separate, Wu Tang Clan, like I could break them motherfuckers up. Like I could still go to Raekwon and Ghost Show. Some of them. Oh, yeah. Not, not, oh, not everybody, <laughs> though. Man. Not everybody. You can't just go. <laughs> you feel me for sure, though. But then Wu Tang, it's generations of Wu Tang, too. Yeah. That's a little unfair because, you know, they. It changed hella times. And then at one point, that was like, what, eight, nine, ten strong? You feel they me? still is, though. It's always nine, ten of them motherfuckers. You mine, is, so. mine is dirty. You know what I'm saying? That's my motherfucker right there. Rest yeah. in peace to dirty. Did you watch that show? Uh, the uh, the biopic? Yeah, yeah, on Hulu, that little series. I seen a little bit of it. I seen like three episodes of that yeah, shit. Yeah, what'd you think? I thought it was dope. Yeah, it was cool. It was cool. I checked it out. Yeah, I thought it I'm was dope. for the next season. I'm lying. I liked it a lot because I'm waiting for the next season, so. <laughs> okay. Well, before we get out of here, man, drop your your um your handle and let everybody know what's where to find what and where it's gonna be at. Okay. Yeah, man. Uh, it's the kid super suede. S U P A S U E D E. Uh, you can find my new album Fruition dropping April twenty first on all digital streaming platforms. Uh, all my social media is at super suede. Uh, contact info is on all my social medias. Make sure you're looking out on all the social platforms again. Fruition. Uh, April twenty first, man. Tap in. Turn me up. For sure, man. I'm glad to have you, bro. Yes, sir. So glad to be here, man. Glad to be having. Thank you. For sure. Well, that's another episode of I Need to Know, and I am LD's awesome known Lawrence to one. And as usual, come on, you know what I want. Oh, shit. Oh, shit.